Well, the artist that I would love to collaborate, and it has to be an artist that is not alive anymore. Um, collaborate in many ways. I, I do have to say um, it's Michael Jackson. It's um, He's my generation. I can relate the most to this person because I grew up with his music. I've, uh, I've got inspired by his actions. I've got inspired by his dance moves. I would have loved, loved to perform with him as a dancer. Be behind him, learn from his craft, learn from his art that he does on stage. Um, I've went to the audition, I did the This Is It audition. Obviously, I didn't book the job, because we all know I would. I didn't do it. So, but Michael is a person that I would have loved to have on my resume and have worked with. I've met him. I was very fortunate as a fan to have met him once, but worked definitely. It's Michael Jackson. Well, I don't concern myself as being someone fearless. Um, maybe that's how I come across. We all are insecure, I'm very sure. Um, with me, what scares me the most is that I'm in my head. I'm, I, all, I think too much. I, and that sometimes in my job can reflect on my performance because I'm so busy working with the what if that then you screw up because you're not concentrated in the moment, you concentrate it in your brain. Um, and this comes from insecurity, we all know that. So um, the worst thing is, 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 is the pressure that you have on stage when, as a professional dancer, when you need to change choreography last minute on world tours, that is something really common, you change the choreographies something is not working technical issues and all of a sudden i have to learn something different now you learn it and most of the time you need a day to sleep over it so the brain memorize it if you don't have that day that's when it gets stressful and that's where i fear that i forget what i'm doing and most of the times i don't but sometimes i'm so much in my brain that i don't forget what i do but i'm not thinking about it and then i basically fuck it up um, this is something that, that, that really bugs me. Let it be in rehearsals because maybe the person that dances with you is better than you. Maybe he's not better, but you think he's better, so insecurity comes through. So, and I'm an insecure person. I might not look like it, because I'm a good actor, but I'm insecure. Let's face it. The perfect location for a date. Um, I'm very old school. Um, some call it boring, some call it um, non-creative. But um, I love the nature. So I'm, a, I'm, I'm actually an outdoor guy. Like I love to be outdoors. I live in LA, so we have beautiful beaches. I'm a person, I love the ocean. So taking someone to the ocean and a quiet beach with nothing around you, it's to me the perfect day because all there is to focus is each other. There's nothing that distracts you. So you can just talk, you can walk by the water and it's just you and that other person. There's no one asking you for an autograph. There's no one asking you for a picture. There's no distractions. So that to me is the perfect date because a date is about getting to know each other. So I guess the beach? Yeah. Alright, this is an interesting one because I know everybody wants to know the answer to this. Um, let me start by saying this. What is the, the question was, what is the best way to basically hit on me? Um, it is not by, ad, by telling me I love your tattoos. No, that turns me off because I know I have tattoos and we all know it, it's not creative. I love when people are creative, when it's something that I don't expect. Let it be funny. I love funny people. We don't laugh enough in this life. So be funny. You caught my attention if you come up to me and be like, 
So how does it feel to be so ugly? That's to me funny. I would laugh. I'll be like, yo, you got balls to say that. That's funny to me because I know I'm not ugly. I'm not. Maybe I'm not the most beautiful guy, but I'm not ugly. So for me, that's 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 sarcasm. Love it. Like that, I look at you totally different and I know you got humor. And if I can laugh with you, that's half of the rent. So if you ever see me on the street, never ever tell me I have nice tattoos and just be creative. Make yourself a fool and you caught my attention. I like this question. What is the best part of being Marco da Silva and what is the worst part of being Marco da Silva? Well, there's not really a worst part because I really like to be Marco da Silva. I choose to be Marco da Silva. The best part is that I get to be who I always wanted to be as a little kid. I've always wanted to be um, looked up to. I wanted to be inspiring. I wanted to be let's say good looking and have a good body and all of that I am so that's really great and I get to travel the world and I get to make people happy with stuff that makes me happy so that's cool the worst part of it is probably that the misconception about Marco the Silva like a lot of people see me and for, for, for whatever reason a lot of people that don't know anything about me think I do porn yet there has never been any pornographic footage out in the internet but people think oh isn't, isn't he do porn I think it's a look thing that I give I'm very secure with my body so this misconception of people not knowing actually what I do and who I am and how deep I can be um, that is the worst thing that that really it, it hurts sometimes you know because I try to keep things positive be spiritual be give a good message out and when then people come around and be like oh aren't you doing porn that's like you know like no buddy I don't do porn it's another guy that looks like me so that's the worst part of being more but that's just a little bit of the really big good parts of it so it doesn't really bother me The best day of my life? That is a really unfair question. Because my life is so crazy and it's so exciting. How am I supposed to choose one best day? Um, it's really tough. Uh, I don't know. Maybe, okay. Let me choose one. My ex-boyfriend, um, he organized a secret birthday party for me. Now, I never had, as far as I can remember, I never had a birthday party done by my parents. I know I had one, but I was two years old. It means nothing because I don't remember it. So after that, I never had a birthday party. I never had balloons. I never had friends over. I never had a cake. I never had that. So on my 33rd birthday, which is last year, he went on dinner with me. And he was like, let's have a nice really dinner and just you and me. He like, you have to dress up, let's let's be really cute. I arrived there and he flew my parents in. He invited all my close friends. I I cried. I broke down in tears. I, I had balloons, I had confetti. I'm 33 years old. I had a big cake with a picture of myself as a little baby. I was emotionally a wreck because it was something that I've always wanted to have but you're not planning it yourself and having someone that cares for you and that you care for and come up with this must have been one of the biggest highlights there ain't no Britney Spears there ain't no Kylie Minogue that can touch that this is something very deep and very um, personal so um, thank you Jenny <laughs>